Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns, chaos ignites, as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. Yet the light of the dynasty still simmers in the hearts of its last descendants. Liu Bei swore an oath with his brothers. They pledged their lives. They will defend the Han. Nobody else can. Hello and welcome everyone, Lahat here, and today I've got some preview gameplay for you guys from Total War Three Kingdoms. I was invited up to London last week to play a preview build of the game and play through the first 30 turns of a Leo Bay campaign. I am restricted to only 20 minutes of gameplay footage from my recordings that I made while at the event with no clip being longer than 10 minutes total, so what I've decided to do with my footage is to make a highlight video of my Leo Bay campaign, essentially an edited let's play of 20 minutes in length. I've added a commentary to the footage and I'll go through my actions that I'm making as well as explaining some of the features and mechanics of the game as they appear in my clips. I won't be able to cover all of the features in the game in my clips today, however, once the gameplay footage has ended I'll likely throw in some screenshots and trailers of Three Kingdoms so that I can discuss more of the features uh, as well as share some more of my thoughts and opinions of the game at this stage. Hopefully when I next get hands on with Three Kingdoms I'll be able to make a longer video where I can dive into more features, so if there's any features and mechanics in particular that you'd like to see if and when I get early access then let me know down in the comment section. Finally before we jump on in and see Leo Bay in action uh, on the campaign map, if any of you are thinking of pre-ordering Three Kingdoms and are looking for a deal and also want to support the channel at the same time, then feel free to check out the link to Games Planet in the description and pinned to the top of the comment section. They're currently running a pre-order offer valid until the 10th of March 2019 uh, where you can save a total of 16% off the price of the game by using the code THINGDOM5 at the checkout. It is an EU only offer, but hopefully I'll be able to offer US deals and discounts with Games Planet soon too. Anyway, enough of all that, time to dive on into the gameplay. Avoid corruption. Deny hollow victories. Liu Bei sees chaos in the face of Dong Zhuo and will not rest until the tyrant's corruption is uprooted and the Han Dynasty restored. Luoyang lies in ruin, my lord. This tyranny is barbaric. What of the people? Dong Zhuo has fled west to Chang'an, with the young Emperor Xian his captive. He holds my nephew at sword point. The coalition delays and wastes time. You are poised, ready to strike now. Though we are fortunate to be under the protection of Lord Gon Xuan Zan, the time may be coming to forge our own path. But yellow turbans and bandits still persist. There must be justice. The people deserve peace. Your sworn brothers are ready to fight. Their oaths were bound long ago. Dong Zhuo's treason must face justice. We are arrows on the wind, my lord. We fly wherever you command. So here we are at the start of a Leo Bay campaign. We've just had the cinematic intro and campaign map flyover, and we're greeted and presented by our first objective, establish your power. And we can do this by achieving three things. Protecting the Kong Rong and Tao Kwan, uh, make our way past the yellow turbans, and we can see they've got an army in front of us uh, on the map, and also find a power base to build up your strength. Uh, and we'll do that by conquering the iron mine uh, that's part of the Dong province. Provinces in three kingdoms are called commanderies, and regions are called counties. So we've got our first mission being issued. 
Eobay and his brothers face the Yellow Turban Scourge. So we must defeat the army in front of us and we'll get the reward of a taste of victory uh, by defeating them. So uh, we'll dive on in and attack them. There is strength in meekness. With heaven! So we get the uh, summary of our force at the top. With our superior forces, our advisors predict a decisive victory. We can't fight a night battle um, because we don't have that skill. So we'll dive on in and fight it on the campaign map. So moving all my forces forward to engage the enemy general and the yellow turban forces. And uh, they've tried issuing a duel to Leo Bay, which I'm going to decline because he's not the best warrior. So I'm going to send in one of my champions to dish out some damage. So Zhang Fei is engaged in single combat. He's taken up the duel against the Yellow Turban General. And so we'll uh, watch the duel as they go into match combat. He's a lot stronger than the Yellow Turban General. Uh, the, the devs did say that for the preview build, they had uh, increased the sort of stats and just general strength and power of heroes um, for the preview build. So potentially we shouldn't see them necessarily as powerful. Oh, and a stab through the chest. And the Yellow Turban general has fallen so this is just the opening battle of the campaign we're just forming up with our spears and archers and slaughtering the rest of the yellow turban troops pretty straightforward and easy battle uh, meanwhile obviously just sending my heroes forward to lock down groups of enemies um, around the battlefield which uh, seems to be a pretty valid strategy uh, for using them. So we've gained some coin. We have the option to ransom and release, seize supplies, or the recruit. Will be better managed under my rule. So we've completed that mission. We've got a taste of victory uh, reward. Which gives us a few buffs and bonuses. Our next mission is to capture and occupy the following settlement. Uh, the iron mine in the Dong province. So that's where we'll keep Seek on moving. And, act upon and we will strike the iron mine itself. Their army we has honor. fallen back. It's not being completely wiped out. So it will come in as reinforcements. So again, diving straight on in to the battle map. Obviously editing up these battles a little bit because I don't have time to show you uh, the battles in their here. full entirety for the 20 minute limit that I've got today to show you some gameplay footage. Charging on in with a two pronged attack on the iron mine and uh, as we zoom out and survey the battlefield be able to see uh, the battle map for the iron mine does accurately show that it is a mining settlement we're attacking. There are towers on all the entrances. Uh, I don't believe that counties uh, minor settlements uh, can actually get walls, so they'll always just have these towers. But I think that's that's fine. And obviously, minor settlements in Three Kingdoms have a garrison. Thank the gods. Um, definitely didn't enjoy that change in Thrones of Britannia. So definitely happy to see that minor settlements um, have... Uh, garrisons once again. Obviously you can put troops in them as well with an army. So again, just leading the charge with my heroes because they're just such powerful units. They can break through the enemy line. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just bombarding the defending troops with my archers. Uh, which we saw slightly earlier. They have the option for flaming shot as well. Using the God of War ability now for one of my heroes does a fair bit of damage to enemy units. So I'm actually dismounting uh, Zhang Fei here. 
So I just want to run him on in. We are charging him into spears. And I thought probably best not to slam him on in there on his horse. So in he goes. So these are the reinforcements now as we've cleared out the garrison. Meanwhile, I sent Guan Yu to capture the victory point. And uh, there we go. We win. There was a little ah there at the start. I don't quite know what that was for. So we've got options to occupy, loot and occupy, or sack and withdraw. And uh, you probably want to pause at those to have a read through them all. But uh, yeah, obviously, they give us income and resources and what have you. Our next mission that's been issued is to recruit and maintain 17 units. We currently have 15. So basically I spent the next few turns recruiting some units. Here we can see the process. You click on the little um, plus symbol on the right hand side of your unit bar and then it's double click to recruit a unit. Now something they brought into Three Kingdoms from Thrones of Britannia is the mustering system so when you recruit a unit it isn't automatically at full strength and actually I'm really happy to see them bring uh, this system over to Three Kingdoms as it's probably one of my favorite changes that they brought into the Total War series with Thrones of Britannia. Here we're on Zhang Fei's um, sort of character screen and we're just giving him the fury skill from here we can also take a look at uh, his military tabs we can see his statistics and his units in his retinue we can also see relations and relations are a massive part of three kingdoms three kingdoms is essentially total war characters um, probably more game of thronesy than ever before um, so from here we can see his acquaintances uh, we can also see you know of those acquaintances who he who he likes so we can see that his brothers are he's oath sworn to them whereas Dong Zhao he um, hates <laughs> because obviously he's a tyrant uh, he's not on friendly terms there so you can keep uh, an eye on relations and obviously that will uh, interact uh, with your characters and their traits and as your campaign unfolds there'll be various um, bits and pieces to engage with with your characters as their relationship changes. We can also see here armor. You can equip different armors and weapons. And something that I was super pleased to hear, something I've wanted to see in Total War games for absolutely ages now, is that these weapons and armors aren't just 2D models. They're also, they've also all been 3D modeled as well, meaning that if you equip a different looking sword or pole arm or armor set, uh, that will appear on the character model on the battle map. Uh, something I've wanted to see for absolutely ages. Um, I think the last time Total War changed the appearance of units when you upgraded them or gave them different armor and weapons was Medieval 2. So um, yeah, definitely pleased to see that. So we've now recruited enough troops to complete that mission. Uh, we now need to hold three settlements, including um, the um, small city of Langyi, uh, to the southeast, and uh, obviously you can see that, that is the there provincial is capital of Gaining that um, commandery. Of commandery. Means you have all the resources within its counties, plus the income from its population and the capital's districts. So once you claim all of the counties within a commandery, then you can issue um, an assignment, which is essentially Three Kingdoms version of edicts. Uh, you basically assign characters. Uh, to carry out different assignments which have different bonuses. We can see the different stances here for Leo Bay's army. Uh, normal stance, encamp stance, ambush stance and force march. I'm going to encamp him here and recruit another unit of archers before we move in on the city itself in, uh, in a siege. You must balance using their experience to fight the tougher battles while making sure you don't waste them on doomed battles. So just having a look through the different music, obviously got Archer Militia and one of Leo Bay's um, sort of bonuses is that militia units um, get free upkeep. And that's not just his army, I believe. I think that's across all armies within his faction. Going to have a quick look at Reforms, which is Three Kingdoms version of the tech tree. And you can issue a new reform every five turns, I believe. And they span through a variety of different areas from philosophy and trade to government reforms, agricultural reforms, industrial reforms and military reforms. And obviously they'll all carry out different 
boons and bonuses. They'll also unlock new buildings, new units, um, and what have you. For reunification. So we're now ready to attack Langyi. And we're going to move on in. Now we get the opportunity to annex if we want to without even fighting at the cost of 50 Unity. Unity is Leo Bay's special uh, faction specific mechanic. It functions from what I can see very similar to uh, the legitimacy uh, mechanic of Kirken from Thrones of Britannia. Because you could also use that to annex factions as well. Um, and um, there's other bonuses to it which we'll explore at a later date and have several strategies available. so here sieging we can actually use tunnels um, tunnel Wait under the walls to, to the break down out. the walls and obviously or rams now I was super excited when I saw walls. the tunneling option I was hoping it was gonna be like uh, Rome Total Wars tunneling system where you could actually see them sort of dig under the walls which was just crazy uh, unfortunately, that's not quite the case with this. It basically means if you go for the tunnel siege equipment, it means that there will be a hole in the wall, a breach in the wall when you start the siege, which we're going to jump straight on into now. So you can see that hole in the wall that was caused by the tunnel. It's a shame that you can't basically choose which part of the wall you want to tunnel. Uh, I don't know quite how the game dictates the area of the wall that it will tunnel and destroy, but... Um, Hey-ho, at least we've got um, some tunneling in there. I assume there will be siege towers as well. I'm assuming it's probably a reform that adds that technology in. But anyway, I want to show you guys a siege in the game as well. So again, going for a two-pronged attack. Sending Leo Bay towards the gate behind the ram. And I'm sending my infantry up the walls. They've uh, got grappling hooks which they throw on top and then they climb on up. Zhang Fei leading the charge on the right flank. And here I believe there's a bit of a bug with the gate not actually showing because I'll pan the camera around to the other side and it will show that there is a gate there. Uh, the build, the preview build of the game that we were on was apparently two months old. Um, so the devs have already tweaked and changed a fair few things and obviously it's a preview build. The game is still in development. So hopefully things like that will be um, sorted by release. Meanwhile, just charging on in through the breach with some of my swords. And moving in against the enemy cavalry with my spearmen. While more of my spears take the walls themselves, capture towers. And then I can move up with my archers. So here we'll see some of them scaling on up the walls. Going on in to the enemy archers that were placed atop the walls. Go for a nice pan across the top as my troops fight for control of the walls themselves. Meanwhile, we've also charged some troops through the gateway, which obviously we rammed open. Arrows raining down on both mine and the enemy troops. Send Leo Bay in now to support the troops that have crashed on through the gates so you'll hear you'll see this the sort of characters give a bit of banter throughout the battle and in fact something I'm not showing you at all just because it would take up uh, too much of the sort of um, valuable time of gameplay that I have to show you only 20 minutes today uh, is that in the sort of loading screen in for battles uh, your characters will sort of talk to one another about the situation about the battle that they're about to face so it's, it's a nice little touch there but again, th there is a massive, massive focus with Three Kingdoms on characters. We're probably not going to get to see a huge amount of that, to be honest, in the gameplay today because it's at the very start of the campaign and um, we're only just starting to develop relations between characters. But the, the whole structure of the game is very much centred and focused around your characters, who they engage with, what they do in battle and on the campaign, and that will be reflected in the sort of traits and bonuses that they gain across the course of a campaign. So, um, could definitely feel a lot of sort of Crusader King 
esque vibes from what will occur with your character. Should have some interesting tales and stories happening. So, again, definitely really looking forward to getting hands on uh, for longer with Three Kingdoms at some point uh, in the near future, I hope, so that I can explore characters and the spies. That was something I didn't get a chance to, to try out in this because um, I actually managed to play through about 15 turns. Going in for another duel here. After you, your brothers are next. You do not stand a chance against With Guan Yu against Wang Yun. Hopefully I'm not completely butchering the pronunciation. If I am, well... Three Kingdoms isn't out until the 7th of March, I believe, so I've got some more time to practice. The enemy unit flees. Oh, that's it. Lob him over your shoulders. Uh, he's he's fleeing from the duel. You coward. He's run away. History will remember your shame. Yes, it shall. So he's running off. Although I imagine he doesn't get to escape with his life, surely, because he's in a siege. He's got nowhere to run. Unless, because of the character focus with Three Kingdoms, there's a chance that he can escape. Which I guess would be cool, because technically he has escaped. He's, he's run off the map. Meanwhile, we're just moving on through the rest of the city to mop up their troops. We're interested to see um, how much variety there is to battle maps and siege maps in the game, and... and how that's reflected with um, population growth and what have you in higher tiers of cities. Uh, hoping that there's a lot of unique maps because there's a lot of varied terrain in China, obviously, and across the Three Kingdoms map. Yeah, still a bit of banter between the characters. So, pulling Zhang Fei back on in, but the morale of the enemy troops has broken, and victory is mine. So, that's all the gameplay recording I can show you for now, hopefully more soon. However, there's still a fair few more features I want to talk about in this video, so I'm going to throw up some screenshots and probably use a couple of the Three Kingdoms trailers that are already out uh, while I talk about some other bits and pieces. So, Population makes a return to the Total War series with Three Kingdoms, however, it's more of a growth and economic feature. It doesn't directly affect military recruitment, which it would have been cool to have seen population levels change upon raising new armies and troops. However, I believe population levels do affect replenishment rates, so I guess it's a bit of an indirect effect on your armies there, as obviously they brought in that mustering system too. As for buildings and settlements, it seems that it's much closer to uh, Thrones of Britannia than, say, Total War Warhammer. Minor settlements are like Thrones of Britannia settlements, where they're just single slots. Uh, for the most part, obviously, Thrones did have some that were dual slots. I don't know if that's the case in Three Kingdoms. All the minor settlements I came up uh, on were just single slot buildings. So you build them up. Um, across that chain. I don't know if there's maybe going to be diverging points. Hopefully there will be. Um, but as for provincial capitals, your towns and cities, it seems that they get a mainline building slot for the city or town line and then it looks like there's three additional building slots for other buildings within the settlement itself. Be interesting to see if as you expand your city to a large city or even an imperial city uh, if whether that unlocks more building slots. I hope so because three seems pretty limited unless maybe there's a lot of work that's gone on behind the scenes to really force you to specialize um, and vary your settlements because you have fewer building slots perhaps but um, I guess we'll have to wait and see but I do feel that settlement building and management is something that in future Total Wars if they've not done it in Three Kingdoms definitely needs an overhaul uh, more depth and options added uh, I guess time will tell how much of that has made its way into Three Kingdoms 
Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to show you guys any of the diplomacy options, uh, but it will definitely be something I come back to and focus on in a future video for sure. But the options overall do look pretty good. Obviously, region trading is back. Huzzah! Long last. Uh, you've got the ability to form coalitions, as well as other diplomatic options and, and trading other resources such as food. So that all sounds pretty good. Food in particular is very important for keeping your military supplies up so you don't take attrition, obviously so your settlements don't starve. So that's going to be probably quite a useful resource to be able to trade. They've also um, categorised all the diplomatic options under four diplomatic deal categories. You've now got war and peace, trade and marriage, alliances and diplomatic treaties. I really hope that these added and improved diplomatic options breathe greater depth into the game, which is something that CA have said, you know, that's what they're aiming to do, add more depth into diplomacy. I mean, on the surface, these new options sound great, but I just hope that the AI actually uses them and that also you, the player, are kind of forced at times to consider these diplomatic options too. In fact, after the Siege of Lang Yi, that battle we had at the end of the gameplay footage today, uh, I actually found myself at a bit of a food shortage, and food is quite an important resource in Three Kingdoms because it also affects your military supplies, and then obviously your, your armies start attritioning if they're not well supplied, and obviously your cities as well. So I found the ability to trade or make a trade agreement for some food uh, very useful. So I just hope that that is a reflection of kind of a lot of the diplomatic features in the game that not necessarily that you're crippled and forced to use that, but you know rather than going out and conquering another farm or a fishing village, I can turn to diplomacy and actually get some useful options out of it. Ultimately, more meaningful diplomacy is what I'm after with Three Kingdoms, and hopefully it delivers on that. In terms of spies, I actually didn't get a chance to use them at all. I'm not actually sure if they were even accessible in the preview build. Because we were limited to 30 turns, I'm not actually sure I could have unlocked espionage yet because I think you have to do a several reforms. I mean, maybe it was on there and I just missed it. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to, to have a play with any spies. So uh, I'll be sure to check them out in a future video too. From what I've seen of Creative Assembly's video that released on their Total War YouTube channel recently, spies do look like they're going to have uh, a lot of fun and obviously very important roles within your campaigns. As I'm a bit of a tech head, I've got to talk about the performance um, of Three Kingdoms. And the preview build itself didn't actually have the option to look at the graphic settings at all, which is kind of odd, because I swear every other preview build I've ever had access to from them has always had uh, those options in. But I guess this build was uh, several months old, so maybe they just hadn't got around to putting that sort of front end in for graphics options yet. Uh, Creative Assembly did mention in a s short presentation uh, earlier on in the event before we got hands on with the game itself that they were utilizing some new technologies for Three Kingdoms for better anti-aliasing for shadows and lighting within the game itself. Uh, I'll try and find out from them what they were specifically and uh, when I can get hands on with uh, Three Kingdoms on my own system I'll do a more comprehensive sort of benchmarking and test of the game itself. Uh, I was able to find out that the preview build PCs had a GTX 1080 graphics card in them and i7-8700 Intel CPUs. Just to give you guys sort of a rough idea of what to expect, I guess. Uh, I believe that we were playing on ultra unit size um, and I was able to turn on the Shadow Play FPS counter and for the most part the performance was pretty similar to Total War Warhammer 2. Uh, but obviously without having both games there and doing similar tests, I, I can't, you know, be be certain to that. But it didn't seem, you know, um, much worse than playing Warhammer 2. Don't know how far into optimization they were. Again, we were told that the preview build was uh, several months old that we were playing on. So I guess it depends how much optimization and tweaking they've done since then. So I'll definitely come back to performance and do some benchmarks and tests once I have access to the game on my own PC. I also didn't get a chance to show you guys the family tree or court system in the game. There also seems to be some sort of imperium type system in there where you go from uh, the rank of noble and you can eventually become emperor and that's part of the uh, victory conditions there as well. But obviously family tree and court system are in the game because 
uh, over the course of it, you'll amass quite a lot of characters, it would seem. And to keep them happy and to manage their satisfaction level, which is the main metric for seeing how happy a character is within your faction, you'll likely want to assign them positions within your court or possibly even adopt them into your family. But of course, beware of spies. Um, you can also place characters who like each other and are friends into the same army to improve satisfaction uh, that way because obviously they'll be fighting next to their friend. Uh, the various positions affect obviously different aspects of the game from administrators helping to improve your uh, commanderies, your provinces, to grand tutors and chancellors and everything in between. Uh, obviously, don't forget to set a faction heir as well, um, or marry your leader so that you can secure the legacy of your dynasty. I think that's pretty much all I can cover for now. That's kind of all the information floating around in my head. I've sort of spat it out into this video. Um, I'll be sure to bring you guys more Three Kingdoms content as and when I get more access. Overall, I'm pretty excited to play more at this stage. As someone that doesn't know much about Chinese history or the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, uh, getting hands-on with the game has certainly, you know, sparked a strong interest in the game. I mean, I've only really dipped my feet in the water at this point, but I didn't see any massive glaring issues. Uh, what I saw I enjoyed for the most part. The, the UI didn't quite mesh with me as well as I'd have liked. I think it's just the same issue though whenever I try a new Total War game, whenever there's a, a very specific art style, it always takes me a fair while to sort of go, oh right, that's where they've moved that, or this does that now, okay. So I think once I play the game a bit more and get used to the AI, I think I'll enjoy it a bit more. But uh, obviously, I need to play the game more overall before I can make a solid verdict. But I'm hopeful that Three Kingdoms will offer a rich, character-driven Total War experience. Uh, and hopefully that this combination of you know heavy focus on the characters will prove successful. As I enjoyed my time with the preview build, with the Leo Bay campaign uh, so far. Anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap this video up for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I look forward to reading all your comments. Uh, let me know your thoughts from what you've seen down in the comment section below. Before I do sign off this video, though, I just want to quickly let you guys know what my content plans will be for Three Kingdoms. I'll probably do another video about faction votes and what have you uh, later on. But I'm planning on doing two Let's Plays at launch uh, of Total War Three Kingdoms. Both of those Let's Plays will be on the Romance mode, which this preview build gameplay was on as well. Uh, I will likely choose uh, one of the 11 Warlords to play as myself and then let you guys vote on who the other Warlord will be for my second Let's Play. But yeah, I just want to give you guys a heads up of that just so you know roughly what to expect from me. There'll be obviously a Warlord vote closer to launch. But anyway, until the next one, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take pride on the Legion, check out my affiliates and sponsors, Games Planet, Overclockers UK, QT, and MSI. Till the next one, ciao for now.